everyone, Stick here from Maplewood Studio. How are you all doing? Welcome to another bass review. It's been a while for lots and lots of reasons, but anyway, I'm back up, I'm back running, and I'm hoping to keep bringing these, e these sort of affordable bass videos to you guys. So keep letting me know what you want to hear. But today, we are checking out the Fender Starcaster bass. Very tasty indeed. Mm, feeling a bit peckish. Okay, so here we go. This is the Fender Starcaster bass. It's um, a kind of style that I really, really like myself, actually. It's got the sort of semi-acoustic properties going on with the center, solid center section, uh, mahogany part in the body, uh, with these wings on the side, which are hollow. So we've got, like I say, mahogany body, maple top, maple back, nice, and obviously the maple edge to give you this semi acoustic kind of or whatever we want to call it body style which i really like as a drummer when i'm playing with bass players and stuff there's nothing worse really for, for, for me from a groove perspective of some real harsh sort of clicky bass sound i mean obviously you want some definition to cut through in a mix but you can't you know a nice fat groovy kind of tone makes the band groove. And these kind of instruments really deliver that in bucket loads. It's a bass in the new place. We've got these really cool bindings going on uh, in the F holes on the body as well as the edges, which I think gives it a lovely character. We've got a maple neck, maple board, skunk stripe on the back. So I think it's a two piece maple neck and it's a 30 inch scale. So it's a little bit shorter than your typical bass. It's still got 22 frets and it plays really, really nice. The neck profile is a C shape. Uh, it's kind of a modern C. It's not quite a skinny C, uh, very comfy in the hand. Nut width is again 41.3, your standard stuff. Finish on the body and the neck is a uh, polyester, gloss polyester finish. So. It can be a little bit sticky in the hand on the neck side of things. The sound of lorries driving past really, really makes me laugh. A couple of other details. I love the black inlay on the headstock myself. I really like that. I think it's coming out up there. Yeah, you'll see it there. See against the white, against the black, against the white. I really like that. Um, nice bit of kind of, yeah, just a bit of sort of flavor if you want, if you like character to the, to the instrument. These are actually made in China. However, the construction as pretty much everything coming out of China these days and Korea and stuff, excellent. I mean, it's very, very high standard indeed. I mean, if you're getting really nosy and start looking at the binding and the neck joint and the neck pocket and all that kind of stuff, there's nothing to fault on the instrument. It's really, really well made. Weight wise, it's medium kind of weight. It's not super light, but it's not super, super heavy either. So if you're after a light base, Probably not the one for you if you've got back trouble like me. Um, but of course, it depends how long you're playing, standing up, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, nice bass to play. And when I've had it on a guitar strap, it hangs really nice too. Obviously, we've got Fender's open back machine heads. These aren't the super, super cheap ones that I've seen on some of the other affordable basses. These tune really nice, got a nice positive feel. And uh, this is holding tuning great. Bridge wise, Fender's high mass bridge, big old lump on the back there. Nicely constructed, big solid mass, carries that sustain from the strings into the solid section of the body really nicely. Moving on to the electronics, as you can see you're down on the second camera, we've got what are called two uh, Fender wide range pickups. These are obviously humbuckers, they are pretty fat and they sound fat. They look fat too, but they uh, deliver a tone I, th I really like and hopefully you will in a minute. So, as usual, ignore my playing. I'm just trying to demonstrate the tone of the instruments to you guys. We've got a three-way toggle switch down here. Very simple, front pickup, back pickup, both pickups, two volumes, two tones. Jack on the edge. So, let me plug it in. I'll just play a simple little um, line for you guys. And uh, yeah, try and juggle between the tones as usual to give you an idea of what this is uh, has on offer. Like I say, if you're looking for that real modern sort of crisp, precise, um, slappy tone and all that kind of thing. Probably not gonna be the bass for you. If you're after some more bluesy, ballsy, full, kind of just a nice big bass tone, carry on watching, check this out. It's wicked. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, so there you go. That was the Fender Starcaster bass. Hopefully, uh, that little bit of playing got, uh, gave you an idea of the tonal characteristics of the instrument. Um, as I always say and always stress, I am no bass player by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but I'm just trying to get you uh, some information, some idea of how each instrument sounds. And hopefully, um, you know, the way I record these gets that all across to you guys. And going on to the recording chain as normal, I'm using my DBX um, Active D12, I think it is, DB12 uh, DI box, um, which goes straight into a RME Fireface 800, uh, recorded at 48K. Uh, there's no um, processing on the signal, on the bass signal, uh, other than a little bit limiting, just to make sure there's no sharp transients go through the recording. Uh, so what you're hearing is the character of the instrument. In the room, I'm using my Ashdown um, EB220 on loan to me from Ashdown uh, Engineering. Wicked little bass combo. I must say the 15 and this together sound big, really big. Really love that combination. Good, good setup. Well, this one's on loan to me from Anderson's Music Store in Guildford. Um, so click the link in the description box below and definitely check out their website. Amazing store, amazing staff, amazing people. A great, great music store. And there's not many of them about these days. Um, but anyway, this one is coming in at £684. So it's not super cheap. It's not super expensive. And if you've got your normal jazz P bass kind of, you know, all in there, um, this is something that's giving you a totally different tonal flavor so very competitively priced um, and a great alternative to your typical go-to's so there you go that was the fender star bass uh stick approves a really really cool bass really enjoy playing it and um don't really want to give it back but as usual i have to give everything back so uh thanks for watching and uh keep an eye out for the next one stick out bye